Hello and welcome to the Stanley Gibbons YouTube channel. My name is George James and I'm Head of Commonwealth here at Stanley Gibbons. And we're here today to talk about collecting revenue stamps and why perhaps they're underappreciated in the market and why basically they're a fantastic thing which will grace any collection. So revenue stamps have been an unusual market uh, in Flatterley. They had a 60 or 70 year fallow spell actually. They fell out of favour in the 1930s uh, for many reasons. I think South America were issuing a lot of stamps as revenue raisers, especially uh, Central America, and it became fashionable to almost be snooty against revenue stamps. And even Stanley Gibbons back in the day used to publish uh, stamp albums, the Strand album that many of you will have started with, and in the front of my father's Strand album, which I was given as a child, it actually said, do not basically sully your pages with these revenue and tobacco stamps, uh, and always go for, in inverted commas, proper stamps. And how times have changed. So the Revenue Society of Great Britain was founded in 1991, which gives you an idea of just how late the, uh, the revenue market returned to Great Britain. Um, the, they started to grow in popularity again basically in the 80s and they've gone from strength to strength there. I mean even when I was a child you would see dealers and auctions with just a box of revenues at the back and now I think partly because of the, the great material that I've got in front of me people are starting to realise just how great these stamps are. So the first reason that I think revenue stamps are very, very much underappreciated and a fantastic thing to collect is that the printers and the quality of the stamps produced are identical in most cases to postage stamps. So you can see here uh, with this artist essay from Waterloo, uh, this is absolutely exquisite. It's the only recorded piece of artwork for any issue, postage or revenue globally that came out of Waterloo's printers. Uh, and you can see just how much effort and time and the quality of execution of these stamps was off the charts. This is a summary jurisdiction stamp from British Guyana and it depicts blind justice. Now you'll see in the close-ups of this stamp um, that this is actually a hand-painted artist essay. The detail here is absolutely astonishing. I suspect most of it would have been printed with a, a single hair brush. And that's from Waterloo. You also get these wonderful essays from the Delarue Archive. So this is a hand-painted essay for Leeward Islands fee stamps, which is as issued. So you have Queen Victoria there, how the frame would look, and then you also have hand-painted uh, value tablets for all the values in the set. So you have all this surviving archival material to uh, add, really add colour to a collection or exhibit. And again, Delarue, Waterloo, you see good essays from Bradbury as well. The quality of the stuff is exactly the same as it was for postage stamps. And you can see from... This is, a, this is part of a plate proof of the summary jurisdiction issue. This is again from Delarue, and you will put the artist essay next to the proof here. But again, these are very, very beautiful stamps. It shows blind justice. Uh, so she literally is wearing a blindfold in the inscription with the, uh, the point of it being philosophically, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, rich or poor, justice just listens and then hands down a sentence. Um, and that brings me on to what they were used for. So, the joy of revenue stamps partially is that they can be used for any sort of tax paid to the government. So from legal fees, land grants, birth certificates, death certificates, taxes on food, taxes on pretty much anything. Uh, anything that you see taxed nowadays was paid back in Victorian times and earlier. And the way that it was recorded was with revenue stamps. And you also get some really unusual ones. So these are from Trinidad. Uh, and this is actually paying customs duty on opium. Um, so this is before, uh, obviously, the current <laughs> crisis in America with opioids. Uh, and in Trinidad at the time, you were just allowed to use it. You were just allowed to smoke it from a pipe. And the government printed specifically these revenues, and these were designed to be wrapped around little, um, little boxes of opium. And they, are, they were customs wraps, and they'd be wrapped around, and opium was just so accepted that the government would just tax them uh, four ounces and two ounces of opium. So you get, you get them for all these fantastically weird and wonderful uh, applications and they're really really wonderful pieces of social history. 
The other reason that revenue stamps are fantastic is the sheer challenge of them. So revenue stamps did not have philatelic distribution. You couldn't go into any post office and buy them. You, if you walked into a government department and said, can I buy these stamps? Usually they would almost always say no. So these stamps are a lot rarer than postage stamps. Uh, and you can see as well that postage stamps were often used uh, locally and produced uh, as and when required. So these are from East Africa, so it's now uh, in the catalogue, it will be under KUT. But these are a set of judicial fee stamps uh, which feature King Edward VII. And these are all postage stamps and they've all been overprinted locally with judicial fee. Uh, so these are not things that you could get basically anywhere unless it was off court documents or in an archive maybe. Um, so the challenge of collecting these is very, very great uh, and it basically takes you a lot longer to form a collection in quality uh, than it does with comparable postage stamps just because less have survived. You also get these great rarities of revenue philately. So this, uh, this is from St Vincent uh, and this surcharge of £25 is something which was very, very rare for St Vincent. Uh, so you actually get two different types of £25 uh, and this was such a high rate of tax on such a small island that one sheet of each of these was produced and they have an even lower survival rate than that. Now despite being great rarities, if you get uh, even a St Vincent postage stamp where there's maybe one or two known, you're looking at tens and tens of thousands of pounds. Now these, despite being just as rare as those, uh, often sell for low four figures. Um, which is a lot of money, but in terms of value for money, when you're looking for, at rarities, revenue stamps are significantly better. Now, the great thing about this is um, when you come to exhibiting your stamps, exhibiting is something that we've covered before on the channel and it's something that I recommend all um, stamp collectors to do. It's a fantastic challenge. If you want to win a really good mark um, at at Stampex, for instance, or any of the international shows, you don't have to spend as much money on a revenue collection to win a gold. I know there are ways of doing it in the postage category um, for, for less money than you would traditionally, but the rarities in revenue philately are generally cheaper, just through supply and demand because less people collect it, than postage stamps. And that represents a fantastic opportunity to win a gold or a large gold for a budget that wouldn't traditionally uh, allow you to do such things in a, in a, a postage stamp market. Um, so if you want to get into exhibiting and if you want to get into competitive philately, revenues are a fantastic ticket for that. Um, and then the last thing to talk about really is just the great beauty of the issued stamps. So these are, these are one of the most iconic uh, revenue stamp issues of the British Commonwealth. This is Tati Concessions. It's a part of Bechuana land which was allowed to uh, apply, they made an agreement and they were allowed to apply this local tax and they printed this absolutely beautiful set uh, depicting elephants. There is a file sheet which was distributed so they are available um, in mint condition. They're very very rare um, but used even rarer than that. Uh, and you also get uh, applications of portraits that you will recognise but on stamps that maybe you don't. So this is a set from Grickerland. Uh, it has two uh, colour trials here in an unissued colour but the portrait here is called the Bourne Head. Now, people familiar with Commonwealth philately will recognise these, this portrait from issues of Transvaal, issues of the Falkland Islands, uh, and even uh, maybe some Australian states used it as well. Um, but this is a very, very popular portrait of Queen Victoria, uh, and these, these are stamps fundamentally of great beauty um, that, as I said, would grace any collection. If you already collect postage stamps, I would really, really recommend whatever country you collect, looking into what revenue stamps are available for your country, for your area, and for your period. And I really strongly recommend just adding some pages to the back of your postage stamp collection and just starting to build these because they're a, they're a fantastic market, they're really excellent value for money, um, and they're fundamentally items of great beauty. Now, we are honoured to have been selected as the auctioneer um, for the Michael Medlicott collection of revenues. All of these items are available um, in the auction, which will be on the 26th of October. Now, Michael had a great West Indies collection, 
Um, but also, um, he had a, a very, very good A to Z run of the British Commonwealth as well. So, yes, you have things like this great British Guyana and St Vincent, but um, he's famous, really, for West Indies, but he's got a great collection as well, a full A to Z of Commonwealth. So the catalogue will be available online um, and can be requested um, just by going to the Stanley Gibbons Auction website. And as you can see from just what's on the table, this barely scratches the surface of the collection and it's really wonderful material that we, we think is going to go very, very well at auction. So uh, we hope to see you there um, and uh, good luck with your bids if you're participating in the sale. Thank you very much.